Welcome to Awaken Florida. I'm your host, Dave Ramaswamy. I'm thrilled to have with me today Rupa Mahadevan. She's an Indian classical vocalist and crossover artist in the South Asian diaspora. Welcome, Rupa. And what awakens you? <laughs> right now, the tea that I drank this morning is helping for sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's really nice to be here for this festival. So thanks for having me. So, you know, coming back to Chennai Music Academy, I, I noticed you did a lot of work there and you know, you, I'm sure your family has connections there. What do you bring, you know, the essence mm. of that culture and specifically the Carnatic music tradition? Like, how do you convey that to American audiences? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, you know, I actually became a full-time musician um, because I felt like there was something inexplicably beautiful about the art form and I wanted to kind of make my, spend more hours a day doing that <laughs> than being sitting in a desk and for looking at a computer, even though I had trained actually to be in, you know, healthcare professional. But um, there's something I think about Indian music um, and Carnatic music in particular that I think allows for a fuller range of emotions um, for the ups and downs, the vicissitudes of life to be expressed because our music is based on raga, the concept of raga, and the thousands of ragas, and every raga has its own kind of personality. Sure. Um, so the role of the artist is actually to then um, get intimate with the raga over the course of a lifetime and be able to bring out its essence. And I feel like that actually helps you as an artist also process your own <laughs> internal yeah. workings, you know? So I think that's a beautiful thing of art. And the Carnatic music especially is truly an ensemble art. So as a vocalist, I am working alongside the violinist, the mridangam player, um, you know, sometimes gatam, ganjira, flute, veena. It, um, that act of being on stage with other humans, um, I feel is very um, energizing. It's, a, it's, it's, it's all about kind of being in the moment, right? Sure. Because there is learned material, but a lot of it is improvised also. So there's a deep sense of listening, of empathy, of community when you're on stage making music together. And um, the whole, the range of emotions and um, that a Carnatic concert takes you, it really feels like um, you've really experienced something uh, great when you, from start to finish, you know. That's incredible. Yeah, so um, that's kind of the experience that I want to feel within myself, but that I also want to then share with other people as well. Um, which is why I chose to <laughs> sure. become a musician. Yeah. You know, one thing I noticed based on your bio and background is you do a lot of fusion work with like yeah. R&B soul. Yeah. So tell us something about that. How did yeah. you get into that? I, I grew up in the States, you know, I was born and raised in the Bay Area. And so I grew up listening to um, a lot of hip hop and R&B and, you know, the, the divas kind of of the 80s and 90s, you know, Whitney and... <laughs> Mar Mariah and so as much as I was listening to you know DKJ Raman and Subalakshmi and yeah. things I was also listening to them and there was something about the throw of the voice particularly in um, music traditions that come from the African-American music uh, sure. uh, history here there is a an abandon there's a searching I love the wailing I love you know there's a sense it's gospel yeah, yeah I love sure. the sense of um, the soul kind of leaving the body oh, through, yeah. through the voice and I connected with that, I resonated with that, and I felt like there is that element of leaving the body in Indian music too. Sure, So that's um, transcendent. Transcendent, exactly. And so in my work, I've often tried to see how I can kind of move between these genres. You essentially try to collapse the genre, you know. Um, but as someone who studied classical music, you know, in some ways that's enough for me. Like there's a whole life, many lifetimes it would take to kind of really feel like you've become a master of that tradition. That being said, to, to fully, I think, represent and feel fulfilled by the music, to represent myself, um, I have to bring in some of those American traditions because that's also who I am. Sure, so, and that helps you connect with audiences here. Definitely, for sure, for sure. Because, you know, language is a barrier. Um, it's a barrier, even in India, I feel like a lot of second generation people now don't necessarily speak. Tamil, Telugu, Absolutely. Uh, certainly not Sanskrit. You know? yeah. So um, 
uh, it helps, uh, which is why improvisational music helps, because there you're not actually, actually using lyrics, you're using ah, you're using vowels or solfege syllables, you're using sure. rhythm. So there's a way to connect to audiences beyond words. But then there is something special that happens, I think, for me and the audience when I'm able to sing in English as well. Sure. So, yeah. You know, a lot of wellness and holistic healing traditions mm -hmm. talk about music therapy, sound yes. therapy, you know, frequencies, vibrations. Tell us something about that. H how does your music heal people? <laughs> uh, that's a tall order. I don't know. <laughs> you know or, I mean, or, or name like a yeah. couple of your favorite pieces. Yeah, I think that um, the reason I think we feel that music heals us is because in some ways it requires presence and absence at the same time. So on the one hand, you know, to, to truly be engaged by music, you know, you can't multitask. Right? Sure. You can't be checking your phone and really paying attention, you know. Um, so in some ways, it kind of brings you closer to maybe what it feels like an essence or another layer of consciousness that we actually don't go to if we're thinking or talking or doing. There's something where the, the body is more alert um, to itself, you know, when, when in the presence of music. I would also say in that process, you... As you bring attention to yourself, you actually then forget yourself. So it seems like a paradox, but you you forget your anxieties, and it's a it's a place to reinvent yourself. So you know what I love, and this is true, I would say even about something like theater or acting, right? Sure. Where for that moment you are not Rupa, you know, you are taking on a character, yeah. And that shows you actually your potential, your imaginative potential, your creative potential to be something else. And so much, I think, of our anxieties and fears are because we cling to some, some sense of identity or how our life should be. And when, when there is that difference. Yeah, like a self-obsession. Exactly. Yeah. And I think music kind of, it snaps you out of that. Yeah, like self-forgetting. And it does it without words, right? Because if someone were to tell you, snap out of it, you yeah. would, you're, you're processing You'll think about that. it more. Exactly. You're like, it's, like, it's almost like asking someone to you know debate you on that right like it's using your mind as opposed to your, your sense your instinct you know and Indian music I will add it's an oral tradition so unlike sure. Western classical music where you look at a score and you're reading notation yeah. right even if you go to the symphony all the instruments instrumentalists are like literally looking at the page while they're performing in Indian music a you have to memorize any composed material but b the idea is that the wisdom's in you already. Sure. So your training is just to be able to activate that and invoke that whenever you need to on stage. So there's, I think, this belief that we are more powerful than we realize, that we can heal ourselves, um, that um, the world is kind of like within us, you know? And so music is a way, I think, of kind of bringing that out, out, yeah, into the open. Sure. <clears throat> Talking about the next generation, how do you inspire the next generation of students and musicians? Yeah, I think um, it's tough because there's so many demands on young people these days. Um, just for one, social media, of course, right? We're, this has become yeah. a <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this action of putting the yeah. hand to the ear or looking it down yeah. at the phone has kind of become like one of our key human behaviors, you know? Um, so I think it's re art is so, so, so important just to um, give us respite, give us time to synthesize like what we've gone through in a day. Like today, I actually want to go do the arts and crafts table <laughs> because there is something yeah. I think about sure. using your hands. Or it's like tactile. Tactile, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Coloring, drawing, you yeah. know, um, singing, dancing. I think all of these... Um, it, it, I think it's a shame that we're, we don't do those more and we're so disconnected at every level. I saw this beautiful quote the other day that was like, I don't, you know, I don't um, buy, I don't make the food I eat. I mean, I essentially create it on the spot, yeah. but I'm not making the ingredients. I don't stitch the clothes I wear. I yeah, didn't yeah. make the car I drive. I didn't build the house I live in. Sure. I didn't create the company I work for, right? Yeah. So, I mean, there is so, so many ways we are not connected to sources of things. Sure. And I do feel like using your hands, your body, these bring you back to some Absolutely. sense of connection. Absolutely. Keeps you grounded. 
Yeah, and it gives you a sense of cre creativity, that you are creating something, that you have agency and power, and a connectedness to the world around you, right? So sure. um, if I'm hearing a pitch and I'm singing it, then I'm in that moment interacting with the physical world, and you feel more purposeful, I think. You know? Sure. So. And in terms of uh, healing, like what's yeah. one takeaway you want to leave our audience with? What, what can they do in the next 30 days to feel better? <laughs> I think um, move, you know, and I don't mean do a workout because I think that uh, has so many other connotations to it. But, um, you know, laugh, be loud, express <laughs> yourself physically. Um, that's what I would say, your question about the second generation, you know, I think um, I notice even in concerts sometimes people think as audience members they have to sit quietly or their body still, you know. So I tell them this is not the opera, you know what I mean? Yeah. You can move, you can respond. Sometimes when I'm singing and someone on stage with me does something nice, I'll say, oh, ballet, amazing, you know, yeah, yeah. I have to respond. And so I think like we need to re-engage with our instincts, I think is, is what it is. So like you know, be stop fearless. Over, stop overthinking. Stop overthinking. Don't yeah. hold back. If you're all the only one in the room that's going to say a thing or make a noise or be, be weird. You know, sure. <laughs> I think in some ways we need to find our uh, kind of opportunities to release, to release um, aspects of who we are that I think we generally suppress in the name of conformity or success or uh not rocking the boat you know yeah sure but any artist will tell you that you can only do that kind of work if you if you kind of don't care in that moment if you let go and surrender don't hold back don't hold back great rupa yeah. thank you so much for being thank here you. it was a pleasure talking to you yeah. come back and see us sometime i will i will thank, thank you. you thank you